You are listening to the ABC Business Show, and here are your hosts, Kerry, Elise, and MJ. Hello, and welcome to the ABC Business Show, where we help entrepreneurs make their dream a reality. Hey there, my name is Kerry. I'm one of your hosts here. Welcome to this episode. As always, I am joined by MJ and Elise. Hello, ladies. How's it going? Hey, Carrie. Oh, going great here. I'm loving this weather in New York. So jealous. Hey, Elise, where are you hanging out today? So, Carrie, I'm back at the beach um, today. So it's uh, a little bit hot, <laughs> steamy hot, by the way. Yeah, I think we should head up to New York and hang out with MJ. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so we are in our third and final episode of this little mini series we have been doing about working remotely. So we started off with MJ a couple of weeks ago talking about how she is splitting her time between Florida and New York and England. Last week, uh, we heard from Elise, who has a uh, house booked in France next year for a whole month. And that was a dream that she shared with us a couple of years ago about wanting to do that. And she made that dream her reality. So if you missed the last two episodes, I definitely encourage you to go back and uh, listen to those and hear their stories as well. So today you get to hear about my remote story and my journey to uh, working remotely as well. So uh, I'm going to kick it off with my quote for the day. So my quote is from Walt Disney. Uh, if you dream it, you can do it. So I thought that was fitting in what our tagline is for the show uh, and just where all three of us have uh, made it to making our dreams a reality. That's right. So Carrie, tell us how you started your business. So I have been in the States for 18 years. And when I came over here, uh, I tried sales for a couple of years, realized that I didn't enjoy selling for other people. Uh, mm -hmm. Got a job at a construction company um, as the bookkeeper and then promoted to office manager six weeks later. I worked there for six years. Uh, enjoyed my time there. Gained a lot of awesome experience. Uh, but somewhere, and I couldn't even tell you where it came from. I, I just started having this dream of having my own business. It was something I'd never thought about previously, but I think just from seeing people online doing this, uh, the CPA that I worked with at the time um, was so uh, complimentary, encouraging uh, to me about you know, the standard of my work and that I started to realize like, okay, maybe I can you know, do this business uh, and not have to work for someone else. Um, Towards the end of my time at the construction company, we were um, you know, talking about starting a family. Uh, we ended up adopting our son at the end of 2013. And uh, I started my business at the beginning of 2013 because I didn't want that nine to five schedule. And I'm sure that resonates with so many people that oh, yeah. uh, I didn't want to be stuck in that office. I didn't want to be you know, sitting in rush hour traffic in the morning and the afternoon, got, not getting home till six o'clock. You know, I wanted that flexibility without you know, somebody else dictating my time. Um, and obviously I'm from England. And so I wanted to be able to travel, you know, when I wanted to, I wanted to go back and see my family and friends. Um, you know, the, the paid vacation time over here, unfortunately is not what I was used to. Uh. And so, you know, I, I really needed that freedom as well. So I designed my business that as long as I had an internet connection, I could work from anywhere. Um, I didn't want to be tied to that one location. Uh, and that was really what kind of motivated me to, you know, design the business to be what it is today. You know, and you wouldn't think like a bookkeeping business would be something you could do remote back then, right? So that's that's pretty amazing. And that applies to a lot of different businesses, I would imagine, where you don't automatically think, oh, this is a business that could be remote, but it can. Right. Right from the beginning, I had one of my very first clients, um, and I still have them today, is in New Jersey. So right back then, you know, I had that remote aspect, but I did have more in-person clients at that point. But uh, yeah, the, the industry has definitely changed. That was one of the things with our industry was a huge, huge, no remote, high risk, security, the whole nine yards. And I started after spending 20 some odd years sitting tied to a desk and working long hours, rushing to get my kids and panicking and stress. I went as soon as the cloud became a secure place to go, we started the experiment and going paperless, mainly pre-prepping to be able to work remote and securely do it. So even in my profession was like, 
what? You've got to be kidding me. You can't work remote. Well, guess what? We had to eventually. Yeah. And we've got to think outside the box. Like I remember when I was starting my career with my family, I was going to open a children's clothing store. Oh, wow. (laughs) Totally. Like, and I, and one of the things that that turned me off from that is I'd have to be there, right? Mm -hmm. I'd have to be there from 10 until maybe eight o'clock at night. And, and the kids would have to get off the bus there and things like that. Well, these days you could totally sell children's clothes online. It would be so easy. And so we have to think outside the box. We've got to stop sticking ourselves into these boxes for the businesses that we're really passionate about and figure out how to make them remote. Absolutely. And now there's so many apps out there that make that even easier across so many different platforms as well. So you know, for us, you know, we're able to, you know, make payments online, receive payments online. You know, we don't have anybody that pays us by check now that has to be mailed to us or delivered to us. And, you know, just so many different apps across so many different industries that allow you to do everything remotely and then give your team easy access as well. So, um, it, you know, it really has. And I think just with COVID as well, I think we said this last week as well, COVID changed a lot in the last two years as well. Mm-hmm. I love that you mentioned the apps because there's also platforms available for people. So my 23-year-old daughter is super creative and she has an Etsy shop and they do everything for her, right? They've got it all set up, the platform, you just plug and play and she's able to have her own shop at such a young age. So it's, it's there, the technology and the society is finally ready. So you can be ready too. Yeah. Perfect. So Carrie. One of the biggest things that a lot of people are, and we're kind of alluding to too, and you already said, you know, why you want to be mobile. And so is there a little more about the why for doing this? I think it's one of those, you know, it sounds really corny, but it's like, you know, life is so short. It's just, you know, in the blink of an eye, you know, you suddenly realize that, okay, my, my kid's going to be nine this year. And, um, you know, you look at the, you know, how old, you know, I've been here 18 years. And I'm like, where did 18 years go to? When you look at the age of, um, you know, family and just life is so short. And I just decided that I just didn't want to be tied to that one place. And I realized, you know, how you know, fortunate and blessed I am that I had a business that I could, you know, really quite easily make into a remote option. Um, but just, I wanted to be able to work wherever I was. I did not want to be tied to that one place. Um, and just to be able to have that option to, you know, do what I wanted to do, what I needed to do. You know, if I needed to suddenly, you know, rush home to England for an emergency or something, I would be able to do that and, and not have to worry about, you know, my business being able to work from anywhere. So, you know, it's that huge flexibility and, you know, realizing that, you know, that's something that really everybody can do. It just may look a little bit different for other people in different businesses, but it's still an option. um, And it's not something that, you know, people should dismiss. Yeah. Wanting it is one thing. (laughs) Making it happen is something completely different. So how did you make it possible? So it's a journey. It's not something that just, um, you know, happens overnight. Um, So the, the key thing for me was building a team. Um, I hired an amazing accounts manager two years ago, and she oversees all the day-to-day running of the office and uh, the team and you know, ensuring the client's work is being done. Uh, so that was you know, really key there um, and not meaning that I had to be the one doing all of the work. Uh, I had an executive assistant, so she takes care of a lot of those other things that I shouldn't be focusing my time on. Um, there's a lot of business owners I know that are doing so much admin and the little, you know, itty bitty details that you don't need to be, you know, concerned with. And so, uh, you know, she takes care, you know, of keeping track of all of those. Um, and then when I was hiring people, I made sure that they had the same you know, passion and desire to grow as me, that they wanted to be part of something um, that was you know, a little bit different because you're not in an office nine to five. Um, but I was able to get you know, people that wanted to work but loved having that flexibility that fitted in with their family as well. So it's not like I told my team, hey, you're in the office, I'm going to be at home or I'm going to be traveling. Um, you know, everybody has that flexibility on my team to work the hours that they want to. Um, and again, I know that doesn't fit with all businesses, um, but there's still that option there to um, you know, make you know, do what you can for, for your team. So what little 
specific things did you put in place in order to handle the management um, of going mobile? So the task management system was a you know the key component for us. Um, you know, we have over 50 clients now. So when you've got that many clients, you know, you're tracking all of your tasks, which we would have to do if we were remote or not, but it just comes, yeah, you know, it becomes more critical now because now I can just go into that system and I can see, okay, this is where this client is at. This is what this client needs to still have done without having to, you know, call up one of my team members and say, hey, how's this going? So the task management, having those systems and processes in place so that everybody knows how to, you know, to do things um, and just to reduce that day-to-day communication um, you know, when you're not sitting there, you know, being able to ask somebody in the desk next to you. Um, and then just encouraging my team. Um, I just, you know, I had to learn to delegate. I had to learn to you know, trust the team to do what I needed them to do. Uh, I know some people are like, well, what happens if my team don't work if I'm not there? And it's like, well, then you have the wrong team members. You know, if that's something you're concerned about, you don't have the right people working for you. So I have an amazing team that just love what they do. They want to succeed. They see the opportunity for them as well. And it's, you know, it's a journey of me learning to trust them and them, you know, learning to be able to, you know, make those decisions, you know, as well and, and to grow. So I bet our listeners are a little bit curious to know what task management system you chose. We use Asana here at ABC Business Show. What do you use in your company? So we actually started off with Asana, um, but it was it wasn't working for us. So we moved to ClickUp. Um, I'm hoping by the end of next month, I'm going to have more positive things to say about it. They've had a lot of glitches recently. Um, so... We're still, you know, we may stay with them. We may move to somebody else. Um, I hate moving task management systems because it's a huge project, but you have to have the right system in place. And unfortunately, you don't always get to figure out what that system is until you start using it day to day. We've been using ClickUp now for six, seven months, and it's still not where we need it to be. So, um, but, you know, I decided, you know, a, a task management system is better than no task management system. And yeah. then to you know figure and when by learning them you learn what you want and what's important what you need um, and so sometimes you just have to you know jump in and try something. Yeah, you know, with me coaching across a bunch of different industries, there's some really great industry specific test management too. Um, there is a home renovator that I coach, and they use one that not only um, helps them track their customers' information, notes on that customer, like mm-hmm. a CRM but they can build a quote within it. And it also does marketing for them. And so they are, I see it come through on my Facebook. I see this company come through and, and I know that when they, people click through for a local vendor, they're getting to my client. So, you know, really investigate and and look into those They you can have almost an all in one. It's not going to be perfect, And like Carrie said, you've got to identify what's most important to me. Is it the lead generation part of it? Is it the customer communication part? Is it the other, whether it's uh, specific to my industry, that's important. So Elise, did you want to say something? Yeah, there there actually are new platforms coming out that do have that combo of the CRM and um, communication and your marketing. And the reason they came out is because entrepreneurs that are remote are not able to do all the functions as quickly as they'd like to. And so, Carrie, you're spot on. Um, it is so critical. In our industry, there's not much um, because I think all we do is task, and that's not true. We do have security, so we can't like put client's name and different things. So we're very, very careful about that. I have a big question for you because we've kind of like touched on it here and there, and you've mentioned it too. But what is the most important thing about being remote for you? It's the freedom, the freedom of time, freedom of location, um, being able to still realize the entrepreneurial dream, um, but not having to be tied to one location. Absolutely. It's wonderful. So we know everything's not rainbows and butterflies. What are some of the road bumps that you might experience when you transition? Road bumps? What are you talking about? Everything's going perfectly smooth. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, 
I think I said before, it's a journey. It's it's something that you cannot rush to suddenly put everything in place in one week. It's something that it's going to take time to do because you don't want to just suddenly throw a whole bunch of information and tasks and responsibilities at your team and then expect them just to run with that. It's something that you have to plan it, do it day by day, week by week, and, and get to that point. Um, you know, as I said before, processes and systems, that's going to be the key, making sure that everybody knows what to happen, stay, everybody's on the same page, um, setting expectations, making sure that everybody knows exactly what you know, is expected of you know, each other and themselves. Um, trust, that's a, you know, a huge part that, um, you know, I, we haven't had a road bump in that, but it's definitely, that's a learning curve, you know, trusting people, you know, with the day-to-day -day business. Um, and you, and, and it's an adjustment process of you know, when you're used to seeing people every day and then you're working more towards being remote, then that's an adjustment as well of just the social side. Um, so you have to make sure as well that you still stay in touch, have those daily team meetings, jump on Zoom as much as so many people have Zoom fatigue. Um, it's great to be able to see, you know, your team's faces and to be able to connect that way. Well, what's the most important thing to you? about being remote just being able to go to England whenever I need to whenever I want that's just the, that's the key okay that's awesome Carrie it's been such a great journey for you and I know um I've been here through some of it and have seen your determination and your um just your way that you've methodically moved through it it's really impressive and yes you've had your ups and downs and we you've had to kind of step back to step forward a couple of times and really making sure the right team's in place. And yet you never took your eye off the ball. You always kept moving towards that goal. And I think that that's really impressive. Well, thank you. You're welcome. That's for sure. And Carrie, we, we, we love working with you because of that. We all have that in common. We're not quitters. We quitters lose. <laughs> we keep going and we just keep changing. Managing the change is the hardest part and we're becoming the best at it. Yeah. Let me just add something to that, at least with you saying that, that the other as important aspect of this is definitely, you know, what I like to call having your tribe around you, um, you know, being, you know, being, having you know, this connection with the both of you and, and doing what we're doing. You know, it's always that encouragement that you need from people that know what you're going through that you know encourage you to keep going or you know, advise you and guide you along the way as well. So I think that you know as people start that remote journey as well, it's something don't try and just do it by yourself. Find other business owners that are doing the same thing um, who have been through that to, to help you as well. Well, that was just great. Thank you so much for sharing. If you were to narrow it down to one tip for the week, what would that be? Um, I'd have to say, you know, make a plan, work the plan, adjust the plan, keep working the plan, uh, and don't give up. It, it's a journey. That's you know, it, that's the biggest thing. It is a journey. It will not happen overnight. That's right. That's yeah. that's exactly it, and that's exactly what we do, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So awesome. Well, that was another uh, great session, ladies. Thank you so much, um, you know, for. Being here and just uh, excited to be able to you know, keep on this journey um, with you both as well. So thank you listeners for being here. Uh, if you have not subscribed to our podcast, please go ahead and do that and uh, leave us a review and, and please share that with uh, your friends and family on your platforms as well. Don't forget, you can also find us on Facebook at the ABC Business Show. So we'll be back next week with another great episode, but uh, don't forget, keep making those dreams a reality. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you next week. You have been listening to the ABC Business Show with Carrie, Elise, and MJ. Make sure you tune in next week. <laughs>